How's it going everybody? I'm back making another video and this actually makes two days in a row. It's super nice when you get the chance to sit down and work through some of this stuff that has been on my mind for a while. Today's video is all about this little camera, the Canon Elan 7E 35mm film camera. I got this camera back in about 2008 when I had aspirations of starting up my own darkroom and developing my own film. While that never happened, I've still managed to put this camera to a bit of use and today I'd like to share some of those photos with you guys. So I just got done shooting a roll of Kodak Portra 800 film and I did some astrophotography with it and then also went out to California and got some shots on the beach. Um, I was really interested to do astro shots because some of the coolest things in the night sky is the colors that are in the nebulas out there. And with a stock DSLR, you can get some of those H alpha colors, but you really need to modify your camera in order to pick up that wider range of light that's beyond our visual spectrum. Thankfully, film is a little bit different. It can kind of gather some different colors than what your DSLR can. So one of the first things I did was point it up to the Orion Nebula. I also did some Milky Way shots and some other uh, star trails and different kinds of stuff. So to develop the film, I sent it off to the darkroom and they have a really nice website. It's super easy to work with them. And I, I haven't opened them yet. So you guys are gonna see what I see the first time seeing them. Okay, nicely packaged up here. We have our receipt. Oh, and also, that's really cool. They send you a mailer so you can send your next roll of film to them without printing out your own envelope. And they also send you the form to fill out. So that's really nice. And it'll get me shooting some more film. We got our negatives right there. I went with the five by seven prints and the high resolution scans. So they send you this proof sheet. So you can get a little preview. Uh, the top half of these images are all my astro shots and then some of the beach shots there. And, oh, it's just so exciting getting new things. Oh, and a business card from Nate. Maybe? That might be from Nate. <laughs> and we have our first shot of Orion. As you can see, the image is a little bit out of focus, so it is kind of hard to judge really how good of a job the film did, but we can see that this color is coming up super nice. And that is one of the hard parts about focusing at night. Yeah, so I've got a couple of shots of Orion, both out of focus. Looks like three out of focus shots. And I'm gonna have to figure out a good trick for how to focus at night. What I did do was set up my Canon 200 millimeter F 2.8 on my DSLR and pre-focus it. And I had it just attached to the tracker by the collar. And I thought that if I just took the one camera off and put my film camera back on that it would maintain focus. Apparently that didn't work out too well. So that was me trying to pre-focus. We got a couple of out of focus shots. What is next? Just kind of a random picture of the stars. Not sure what I was doing there. Another random picture of the stars, but this one's in really nice focus. You see those stars are super duper small. So I think that was when I went and actually looked through the viewfinder to try to manually focus. Oh yeah, okay. One, I'm not always super into being uh, obsessive about the special unique astro events. There's this one where Mars and the Pleiades were close to each other and everyone was so excited about it. I didn't really care but I pointed my film camera at it and got that shot. So Mars is that real bright orange star kind of on the bottom right of this image. And we can see the Pleiades star cluster. So 
kind of a cool shot, still not in super sharp focus. All right, getting into another Orion shot. It's good, the colors are really, really interesting and I'm glad to see how well they came out. I just need to work on focusing. So if anyone watching this has done like deep space or something with a 200 millimeter at night, how did you focus? I thought the focus and change cameras would work, but that didn't quite do the trick. All right, another one. Okay, so here we can see the difference between these two images when you stop the lens down. This first image I was shooting at 30 seconds at f2.8, and then I changed it to a two minute exposure at f4. Um, the reason that that math doesn't quite add up is the rule of reciprocity failure, but we'll get into that in a minute. Just still wanna go over these photos. All right, then I got my Sigma 50 millimeter lens here, and I pointed up at the Milky Way. And this one I was also manually focusing. That is really cool. It's got a lot of distortion in the corners. I don't know if that's a trait of film or really why that is, but the colors in these images are really, really cool. Yep, another one of the Milky Way. I think just working on learning how to focus is really what is gonna be key for me. All right, so the 15 millimeter worked out as far as getting that really cool color. Just gotta focus it. So then I put on this Rokinon 12 millimeter f2.8. This, uh, the last images too with the Sigma were on the tracker. So I was shooting at one was like 30 seconds and then one was a couple of minutes and stopped the lens down. All I really learned from that is that I need to learn how to focus, but it looks like I got a lot better with this Rokinon. So this was a tracked image for two minutes and it worked really well. The tracking worked and we can see some cool colors, but it is kind of impossible to make a nice nightscape image with that long of a tracker. So I tried a bit of an experiment and it looks like that experiment worked out. So one cool thing about the Moo Shoot Move and a lot of the different trackers offer this is a half speed star tracking mode. So for this image you see right now, I turned it on to that half speed mode and set my shutter time to 60 seconds. And I think that's a really nice balance because it let in enough light to get a decent image of the landscape and of the stars. And there's no really noticeable motion blur. So that is super cool. I'm excited I did that. That's a good little trick to remember. So there was one and two. Yeah, it was just kind of a difference in the cars that are going by, but yeah, I'm really happy with how this turned out. I think that could be a fun little way of capturing the stars. That might be my favorite so far is go with a really wide angle lens and the half speed on your tracker. Aha, uh -huh. now we're getting into some star trails. So I headed up to Sapphire Point. I left this exposing for about two hours and there was a tiny little crescent moon, which looks like a rocket ship in this image. So I stopped my lens down to F4, still on that Rokinon and left my film going for two hours or so. And cool little star trail. Here was the next star trail image. I actually made this one while I was filming this video right here about how to get your best results from an Olympus camera. I just ran down the hill and had this going and I really like how it turned out. Really interesting colors that we're getting. So uh, the hard thing is the airplanes. Like they're, they're just there. There's no way of getting around that. But yeah, doing the film star trails is always fun. Okay. So that is all I have for the astro photos. Now I just headed out to the beach in California to snap some shots here. There is just such a unique feel to having film images. They're not better, but they just feel kind of cool. It's that nostalgic look. And you can actually hold something in your hands. I love holding prints in my hands and not just looking on the computer. Oh, I like this one. I like this one where I focused on the muscles. Focus on me focusing on the muscles. And I have 
everything in the background out of focus. I was still running that Sigma 50 millimeter lens, which is becoming, again, one of my favorite lenses I own. Okay, getting through these, just kind of some standard beachy shots with the waves breaking. Ooh, here we go. And that is what film is so good at, is getting photos of people that just have that nostalgic old feel. So on this one that you're looking at, I was going for that reflection in her glasses. Kinda got it. It's just really cool holding these in your hand. Ooh, I like this one. This is a perfect like Wander Babe Instagram photo. No filter necessary, because it's shot on 800 speed film. Focusing is kind of tough. This camera has like an eye detect autofocus, but it's detecting the photographer's eye, and it kind of works. We'll see if Canon brings that out in another, in their newer cameras. This image here, I drastically underexposed. I looked down and I was actually at 4,000th of a second instead of like 40th where I should have been. I don't know the exact numbers, but Darkroom did a really good job at trying to help out this negative that was way too dark. It's grainy, but they were able to process it really well. So. I really like what Darkroom's been doing. Okay, I do like this shot quite a bit. It looks like I missed focus, like my focus is down on her shirt rather than up on her face, but it still has that super cool old filmy feel. Yeah, this one. This one might be my favorite. I put her down like in the corner and I focused it right and exposed it right and we got the reflection from the sunglasses. Yeah, I like that one. Then I had her take a shot of me and she focused on the palm trees in the back and I stood there looking all cool with my big Olympus camera. All right, so my review of Darkroom is they processed these really nicely. They packaged it nicely. They were able to help out my drastically underexposed images and they got some really good results from these uh, astro photos. So I'll definitely be going back to Darkroom in the future. Um, now let's talk a little bit about actually photographing at night on film. Uh, a couple things that are that you definitely need is to figure out what lens you want to use. I seem to have the most success with this super wide angle just because it's more of what you're going to see is in focus and it was really easy to use. When I was running these longer lenses, the focus was a bit challenging, but I still want to try again, especially with this 200 millimeter. I want to try to get some more nebulas because the film gives such a cool color. So photographing at night, the focus is definitely an issue. You want to make sure you have a good sturdy tripod. A tracker, if you're using that for that half speed, could be really useful but this is probably the most important thing, is having yourself, I, this is an intervalometer, but any sort of shutter release for your camera where you can manually control your bulb exposures, because most of these older film cameras don't have too fancy a brains in there for doing uh, internal longer exposures. So very important here, also helps to reduce camera shake. Now, as far as planning your exposures, uh, unfortunately, it's not as easy as planning exposures with a DSLR, especially at night. When you're shooting with a digital camera like my R5 here, you can pl plan your exposure math pretty simply. You know that if you're shooting an image for 15 seconds and it's too dark, if you go up to 30 seconds, you're going to be doubling your exposure time. And that is because of the rule of reciprocity. As you increase the amount of time, you will increase the amount of brightness pretty much perfectly. However, film does not follow this rule. It is considered to have reciprocity failure. So I made a very scientific chart here to explain it. This chart shows how as your exposure time, oh, it's upside down. This chart shows how when your exposure time increases, your exposure increases pretty much perfectly. So a eight second exposure is twice as bright as a four second exposure. And that keeps going all the way up. 
So when you stop down a lens by one stop, you know just to add one stop of exposure time to compensate for it. Unfortunately, film looks more like this, where as your time goes up, your exposure doesn't necessarily keep going. So an eight second exposure is not really twice as bright as a four second exposure. And this just keeps getting worse the more time you add to your exposure. Now there's a bunch of scientific reasons for why this is the case, but what we need to know is just practically how to work around this. And thankfully, with so many of our problems in life, there's an app for that. You can go ahead and download a free app called Reciprocity, where you can actually enter your different information for your film and for whatever sort of filter anything you have over it. And it'll show you really clearly what the reciprocity failure rates are for your different film. And from my experience, this does work pretty well. It won't be perfect, but it will give you an idea. This will also help you when you're going to choose your different films. For example, I have some Kodak Ektar film, so I can select that right here. And down here I have my filter factor, not using a filter. Um, the focal length I set to 50 because that's the focal length I'll probably be using. And my measured exposure, so if I was to get a properly exposed image at 60 seconds, usually, my calculated exposure would be one minute and 47 seconds. So that's almost doubling the required exposure time. But if I change this, something like the Kodak Portra 400 and select that, you can see that my measured exposure time still at 60, my calculated exposure is three minutes and 46 seconds. So while the ISO 100 film is less sensitive to the light, it has a better reciprocity failure ratio, so it might be a better film to choose. This is just really helpful for if you are trying to think about stopping down a lens like I did in this image right here. The first one on your left here is shot at 30 seconds at f2.8, where the one on the right is shot at two minutes at f4. Usually doing that would make the one on the right a stop brighter, but because of the failure, they're it's actually slightly underexposed. So learning this is really a key part for if you're trying to get the best photos possible on film. But one way that the reciprocity failure actually can help us out is with these sort of photos. Shooting this for two hours, if I just left my R5 exposed for that long, would be completely blown out. But because of that diminishing return on your exposure time, you're, you can get these star trails where everything is nicely exposed, where it would be impossible to do it that simply on a DSLR. So there's a, a couple little benefits and secret little tricks to this reciprocity failure. Um, Again, my review of Darkroom is that they did an excellent job. They had super good customer service. They got back to me quickly. They scanned these images into their website and I'm gonna go ahead and download those right now. And yeah, so far so good with what they've given me. So um, let me know what you guys think. If shooting film is something that you're interested in doing in the future, if you'd like to see me work some more on that and try to nail my focus on those deep space shots or what you guys would like to see in the future as far as proper 35 millimeter photography. Thank you guys so much for watching. I know this episode's been a little bit different than my normal, but I guess using this camera is a little bit different than my normal. Uh, all the links for stuff are down below. I've said it all before. Please give me that thumbs up. It does really help me out. I'll catch you next time.